Joseph Diaguardi, certified public accountant and former member of Congress. Uh, your new book is Unaccountable Congress, It Doesn't Add Up. Why'd you write this book? Good time for it, don't you think? But I started writing it three years ago, and uh, thank God with a little luck, it came out at a time when I think the public's uh, eyes are, are focused on this issue. Uh, I wrote the book because this was the message that I uh, took to Congress with me in 1985. Um, I was kind of surprised when I got there, Lou, to find out that I was the only practicing certified public accountant ever elected in over 200 years. Uh, and I did go there because I felt that the process needed someone to um, uh, kind of refine it. And one of the things that I did in Congress was to propose a bill that was passed after I left Congress calling for a chief financial officer of the United States of America. George Bush signed that legislation in 1990. Uh, the reason for the book is that um, after I left Congress, it dawned on me that if I was going to leave any legacy for the four years that I was there, it should be a report to the people of the United States of America as to what I saw as a professional CPA, having been trained for 22 years with one of the world's largest accounting firms, uh, to see certain things that the average person and certainly the average congressman uh, didn't see and still doesn't see. In Congress, they use this card to vote, but they've turned it into the most expensive credit card in the world, with no limit, and you get the bill. It's a ticking time bomb that cripples the economy, stops job creation, and will make us poor. Well, an ominous prognosis of America's financial health from the heads of President Obama's debt commission. If we don't restore some fiscal sanity around here, as a nation, we are going to go broke. Uh, the basic problem is we've had ideologues in the White House. Barack Obama is a Gothic liberal. George O. Bush was a Gothic conservative. One wants to solve the problem by creating a value-added tax. The other wants to solve the problem merely by cutting spending across the board. In reality, we need systemic reform. This is bigger than me or Erskine or you. This is about your. Ch this is about the future of America. This country is going to go to the bow-wows unless we deal with the entitlements and Social Security and Medicare. To be a leader, you need good information. And there's no better information to have if you're trying to manage this huge financial entity called the United States of America than good numbers. Numbers that are telling us what we're really spending, what we're really borrowing, not using an accounting system that keeps economic activity off the books. And the bottom line is, politicians are currying favor with today's voters at the expense of tomorrow's taxpayers. Who are tomorrow's taxpayers? Your kids. People not born. They don't care about that. That's why we're doing this. They want to get reelected. There is a conflict here. Why? The way, maybe the, the issue is to reform the electoral process. Because too many people are interested in those pensions, they want to stay in, they don't like to leave that power, there are no term limits, and therefore the next generation is suffering because of that. Now, I went into the lion's den. You see this? This is the National Defense Forum at the Reagan Library, Simi Valley. I figured this is where I had to make my stand. And I waited and waited. I saw how they were rushing. So I had to get up 15 minutes before they allowed me to ask that question. I think I know what I'm talking about. And I'm standing there with this thing in my hand for 15 minutes saying, how am I going to capture this group of people so that they understand that there's something important here? And who's the woman there? She is the chairman of this whole thing, secretary of the Air Force. Where is this? Under President Reagan's 747 in the library. If you go, you can see it's hanging on the ceiling. 600 lobbyists are there, the defense industry. You talk about a voice, you talk about a lobby, and all the generals are there. Nobody goes here. The requirement for financial statements, the act that I introduced, started in 1994. The controller general, in his report, the last statement put out, says that the armed services, the DOD, will not be able to comply 
and get an opinion because there are such material weaknesses in the way you account for things and you want more money. So is there a question in there? The question is, why is it taking so long? I mean, it's not rocket science accounting. You've got to get the right people in to there to try to figure out why you can't get an okay. audit of the DOD. Secretary James and Dr. Zakhan. Um, I'm going to, rather than try to explain why, I'm going to agree with you. It has taken too long. And I mentioned briefly that this is something we're working hard on in the Air Force. It, we're working hard across the Department of Defense, including Frank, Bob Work above him. I think stay tuned very shortly, like within the next year, you're going to see that we're going to have major advances. We're going to get there.